Ladies and gentlemen, it is your boy, Delexman. We are here to talk about recently released talent from WWE. I am counting, as of right now, eight. Eight released talent. Are they done? Are they finished? Most likely not. <clears throat> but I'm making this video with the eight I have right now. If more come out tomorrow or in a later time, I might come up here and make another video talking about those releases. But I'm only going to talk about the following wrestlers. Those wrestlers are Wade Barrett, Santina Morella, Cameron, Hornswoggle, a.k.a. the Little Bastard, Alex Riley, El Torito, Zeb Coulter, a.k.a. Dirty Dutch Mantel, and one that really hurts me. Damien Sandow. <clears throat> ah, dumbasses. I don't know. I'm just that was actually a real cough. But uh, yeah, that's. I'm gonna have a long rant about that one. So let's go in order. Bourbon sauce and brown sugar bacon. And Angus steak, and a top bun, and a bottom bun. On these, we have the meat. Based off of how I set them on this list, let's start off with Wade Barrett. Now, Wade Barrett hurts. Wade Barrett had so much potential, so much potential to be a top talent in WWE. I can remember when he debuted in 2010 on NXT. He had all the tools, man. He had the charisma. He had the microphone skills. He had the look. I thought to myself, oh, they are going to push him to the moon. Multiple time world champion. Definitely. And he never got it. He never, ever got it. And it's not that he didn't have it, the it factor. It's just the company never really gave it to him. And it's not from them not being interested. I think WWE wanted to make him a top name. I think they had all intentions of Wade Barrett being a main event player. They gave him Nexus. They gave him the core. They gave him... IC Championship runs. They gave him feuds with John Cena and Randy Orton and top, top names. They tried everything with him. He's gone through gimmicks. Multiple gimmicks. Uh, the Nexus is one. And then he had the whole Fight Club gimmick that didn't go anywhere. Then he had Bob Newsberry gimmick. It was supposed to be a joke and he got it over. He got bad news over. Now, King Barrett didn't work out at all. That was a big failure. But they tried really hard. I just think Wade Barrett came in at a, a horrible time in WWE. Wade Barrett, if he was working with a company that had better writing, that had you know more interest in his character and booking him the right way, I think he really could have been a big star for WWE. I can see him being big in Lucha Underground and NXT and old school WWF, late Attitude Era WWE. Uh, I just kind of feel like he just really wasn't given the right stuff to work with, you know, in terms of views, in terms of uh, storylines, in terms of all of that. He just never became the star that we knew he could be, and WWE wanted him to be. That's unfortunate. We can say that it's WWE's fault. We can say it's his fault. Maybe it is his fault, because he did get hurt a lot. Wade Barrett's main problem, in my personal opinion, is the fact that he got injured so many times. When they wanted to push him, when they started to push him, he always seemed to get hurt. So maybe they just gave up. He's too injury prone. He's too injury prone. And that sucks. So, uh, I wish him the best, man. Hopefully, he ends up in a promotion that will use him the right way. And if he leaves wrestling, whatever he decides to do, I hope he is successful at it. 
Now, Santino Morello. First off, Santino, I thought, retired. I don't even know how he got his job back, but... Well, no, I do remember him getting a job back, but... I don't know what for. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Regardless, he was funny in 2007 and 2008. Those two years, Santino Morella was a huge part of why I watched WWE. I watched him every single week. This man was funny. Hilarious. And after about 2009, he was alright. And then 2011 hit, and then the birth of the Cobra came around, and I'm just like, what this guy, what this guy, what this guy, hated him, hated him, hated him, hated him ever since, hated his stupid segments with the raw guest hosts, and then the stupid segments with Hornswoggle, and the stupid matches he had with Heath Slater, the Snake Charmer match with him, Heath Slater, Great Khali, and the other guy that got released, I don't even remember his name. I just, it was so bad. It was so bad. Everything he was involved in was terrible. So, him being released, honestly, is a relief. Because I don't have to deal with any more crappy TV with him involved. At least from him. You know. After him is Cameron. Thank you. It's unfortunate that we lost, you know, a town like Cameron. Yes, 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 yes! Yeah, you know, she tried. She really did try. She tried. <laughs> Fuck it. I'm happy she's gone. Fuck Cameron. I never liked that bitch. Never liked her. Didn't like her from the first time I saw her on Tough Enough. Talking about some of my favorite match was Alicia Fox and Malinga. <laughs> Fuck out of here! I don't even know why they gave her a job! A waste of money and space! Why did you hire her? Oh, the Tommy Beavers. <laughs> I'm glad she's gone. I don't care. If she watched this video, I'm glad she's gone. You don't need to be in the wrestling business. And she can take it personal all she wants. Honestly, let's just pretend she never came. She never came. Never. Okay, I put her in the same league as... No, you know what? I was going to say the same league as Eva Marie. I like Eva Marie more than Cameron. Oh, yeah, I went there. Eva Marie, I respect more than Cameron. Cameron needs to find herself another career. Whether that's in rapping, or whether that's in some kind of messiness. Wherever, whatever, wherever, with whoever she decides to get with. Just make sure it's far away from wrestling. That's just my opinion of the matter. <sighs> Another person I am so glad is gone. Hornswoggle. Yes. 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 I'm not even going to play with this one. I am happy that little run is out of WWE. He was cool as the little bastard when he was working with Finley. He was awesome as a little bastard, but ever since he became Vince McMahon's illegitimate son, I hated him. I hated his Cruiserweight Championship run. I hated his stunt with DX. I hated his stuff as, oh my god, the anonymous GM of Raw. I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. Motherfucker walked around in a goddamn diaper. I'm not joking you. That is not a joke. He walked around, around, uh, he walked around in a goddamn diaper. He walked around in a diaper. It was bad. Terrible. I don't understand why they hired this man. Oh, it's for the kids. Oh, it's for the kids. The kids thought he was stupid. Guarantee you, the kids thought this was stupid. The talent itself, the guy playing on Swaggle, I had no gripes against. It's just... He was just involved in some terrible TV. And I'm so glad he's gone because I don't ever, ever, ever met that Chris Jericho ever when I see his face again. He was bad. Bad for WWE. Glad he's gone. Hallelujah. El Torito. 
didn't care. I hated that Los Matadores gimmick anyways. <laughs> so I'm glad he gone too. Freaking bull. He's a goddamn bull. Who wanna... Who wanna... Goddamn bull. Who wants to watch a wrestling show with a goddamn bull? I know the talent behind El Torito was a legend, I think. People tell me he was a legend in Mexico or he was very popular. I don't know. I don't know who he was, but people tell me he was good. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't. Maybe he'll be good in judgment. Around. Book direct to Hilton.com for the lowest price online. And start playing. Start relaxing. Start loving. Book direct to Hilton.com and start saving. Okay. I don't. Maybe he'll be good in Charlie Brown. But El Torito was terrible. And then we got uh, Alex Riley. Mm -hmm. I liked him in NXT. I liked him as Mrs. You know, talker. Uh, uh, his uh, manager, his uh, backup support, his you know, his hype man. I liked him as that guy. And I liked him as a color commentator. I wish he would have stayed as a color commentator. Maybe he still have a job. But nope. I want to get back inside the ring. Alex Riley's claim to fame is that baby face turn he had on The Miz that went nowhere. Nowhere. He might tell you different, but it went nowhere. Sorry, Alex. You know, uh, I don't know. It might be the same scenario as Wade Barrett, maybe under you know, a better WWE with better writing and better storylines. He could have, most likely would have been uh, better off. Maybe a better career, prominent spots. Maybe he would be worse. I don't know, though. I just kind of feel like... Uh, I just think Alex Riley was just destined to fail. He was not meant to succeed in WWE. Wrong place, wrong time. Sorry, Alex. Maybe wherever else you do, you'll be more successful, but ugh. WWE was not for you, man. It really wasn't. Uh, Zeb Coulter, uh, Dirty Dutch Mantel. What else was there for him to do? They could have stuck with him. They could have stuck him with someone else, maybe. Uh, but who? I loved. Uh, Real Americans. I thought the stunt, the stunt with him, with Jack Swagger and Cesaro was fabulous. We the people. Uh, but after that, he he did not work with anybody. They put him with Alberto Del Rio, and it went nowhere. They couldn't find one reason, one good reason to keep those two together. So. Yeah, man. Sorry, Zeb. You're still a legend in my book. Dirty Dutch Mantel? Absolutely. I don't know why I didn't... Yeah, I don't know why I didn't keep him on as a creative writer. Hello? You can use some more of those. Seriously. Hmm. That reminds me. I don't think Jack Swagger is staying around very long either. I think that guy is on his way out the door. If you were to ask me which three guys I think are on their way out, I would say Jack Swagger, Adam Rose, and Ryback. I'll get to those three after I talk about this man, because I am livid. There was one, one release that really made me angry. That release was Damian Sandow. <laughs> Why? Why, why, why? I don't get... 
There are some things that WWE does that I just do not understand. You know, there are certain releases that I might not like, but I can at least go, okay, they didn't like him because he was, I don't know, he was a skinny little punk or he was fat. They didn't like his look. They didn't like his personality, like CM Punk, I get. I get CM Punk. He was hard to work with. Quote unquote, hard to work with. Um, I get others. I do not, for the life of me, I do not understand why they would release Damien Sandow. He is everything they could want. Everything they could want in a wrestler. Any gimmick that they gave to him, he could play and make work. The intellectual savior of the masses was a brilliant, it was a brilliant gimmick. It really was. It reminded me of the genius, of Lady Popo. And it was so great. You're welcome. It got over. Within a month, it was over. Great heel character. Could have done some really good things with him. Grab the microphone, really good inside the ring, not one championship, well, no, no, not one championship, nothing, what did he win, oh, he won money in the bank, let's not forget about that, he won money in the bank, cast in, and lost God's in. and he never recovered, never recovered, why is it, why is it, why is it that people who lose, and I mean, lose, not Kevin Owens lose, because he beat John Cena. I'm talking about lose to John Cena. They never recover. Rusev had just recovered. Bray Wyatt is now recovering because they turned him babyface. Damien Sandow never recovered. Never recovered. And what pisses me off, what pisses me off about Damien Sandow, I honestly believe they never gave this guy a shot. Never. At all, not one chance did they ever get to this guy. Name one few. One few he had that was actually prominent and great. Don't worry, I'll wait. There wasn't any. Yes, he's had cues. Cody Rhodes, Miz. Where did those cues go? What happened in that few, in those cues that made him connect with the audience? That made him, well, well. Miz, he did a lot of things to connect with the audience, but it never went anywhere. They could have made Miz versus Damien Sandow a prominent WrestleMania match. Built that thing up for six months. Make Damien Sandow one of the best baby faces in the company, and the match didn't even happen at WrestleMania. They got a free show competition in that Andre the Giant Battle Royal, and then they had a match on Raw. They didn't give him a shot. They never gave him a shot. Damien Sandow, rapping on YouTube, was some of the best shit I've seen. And he was more entertaining than Roman Reigns. Oh, there it is. I said it. Maybe that's why they got rid of him. They got rid of Damien Sandow because he was more entertaining than he was supposed to be. That's what he said on Twitter. He came out and said it. They don't want me to be this entertaining. And I'm not going to stop being this entertaining. Is that it? Is it because he was a talent that could get over in spite of the company not wanting him to get over? Which I don't understand. I hope that's not the case. I hope that's not the case. Why would you not want your talent to get over? Why would you try to hinder the talent that's working for you, that could make you money? Damien Sandow is a money maker. Fuck the man to his money maker. Damien Sandow is a living, breathing money machine. And any company, any promotion, any thing, place, person, place, whatever picks this man up is going to make. And I guarantee you what will happen is, he'll go off, be famous somewhere, then he'll be begging, begging, begging him to come back. Hell, fans might force their hands and they'll bring him back sometime soon. I don't know, but it makes no sense. He has everything they could want. Everything. But they don't want him. You actually had a wrestler. The fans respected and wanted to give you money to see. We paid money to see, and you 
got rid of him because you didn't like him. It's not because he wasn't good at his job. It's because the company did not like him. I don't understand it. I don't understand how someone like Eva Marie, a son, a son of a bitch, like, oh man, I'm, I'm, I just lost. I just lost my words. You know, people like Eva Marie have a job. They're not doing anything with people like Eve Slater and just these guys are never gonna be anything, they're never gonna amount to anything. They need to that have potential. He had potential, he had potential, he had potential. And he's gone. And he's gone. Bad. 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 Will they change their mind? I have no idea. I think it's done. And I think even if they did change their mind, they would have to do something drastic to bring him back. They would have to promise him not only a shot at the World Championship, a run with the World Championship. Because I think he's done. They completely screwed him over. That was a terrible decision. Terrible decision. <laughs> We're gonna keep Big Show around. We're gonna keep Mark Henry around. But we'll get rid of Damian Sandow. I don't agree with that at all. So that's my rant. And that's my thoughts on the eight release. Like I said before, the ones I think will be released Ryback, Adam Rose, Jack Swagger. Jack Swagger, because he really, really has nothing else for him to do. Zeph Coulter was the only thing that made him interested in. He's gone. Limits. Do they even exist? Or is it just a made up word? And do. Zach Coulter was the only thing that made him interesting, and he's gone. Sorry, Jack, you're out here. Just don't let the door hit you on the way out. We the people. Um, Adam Rose <laughs> recently suspended um, for for violating drug policy, has been posting uh, doctor notes, um, you know, his doctor telling WWE that they wrongfully suspended him. Um, the test was wrong, and he apparently uh, was, you know, I think he was suspended because he had some painkillers that was prescribed to him by his doctor or some stuff like that, I don't know. Um, wherever the case is, I do think he needs to be quiet. I do think he needs to just take his suspension like a man. Um, just take it, man. If you try to tell the WWE that you're wrong, that they're wrong, um, well, if you try telling them that you're wrong, maybe they'll keep you. <laughs> but if you try telling them that they're wrong, they're probably not going to like that. I can tell them that they're wrong, because I don't work for them. You work for them, and you have a kid, and you have a wife. So, be careful. Just just saying that. Um, I, I would like to see Leo Kruger come back one day, and I want to be in WWE. So, let's play cool Adam Rose. Let's just... Be a team player and just relax. Ryback, I think, is gone. I think Ryback has pretty much sealed the deal with uh, his recent uh, tirade that he released on, I think it was Tumblr or Instagram, I don't remember. But on social media, he pretty much said, uh, to paraphrase, that he feels like he's not being paid or respected as the talent that he is. He works hard like everybody else. He puts in effort. He is a workhorse. And, you know, he feels like it makes no sense for him to lose all these matches and not be paid as much as the winners. So WWE apparently has a system where they actually pay the wrestlers who win more money than the ones who lose. And that would make sense if it was in the fantasy world of wrestling. Like, fantasy-wise, that makes sense because you want to use that for storylines. Real world-wise, I get paying Brock Lesnar... The Rock, John Cena, Randy Orton, 
more than the talents that have been there for like a few years. I think, I don't know how the policy works in WWE, but I can see them, you know, increasing your pay as the year goes by. That makes sense. If you've been there for 10 years, you should definitely be paid more than people who've been there for two years. That makes sense. But if you're wrestling someone that is in the tenure that you've been there, and you get paid less than them because you were booked to lose. That makes no sense. I am with him on that. I respect him on that. And I'm not going to, uh, you know, really give him any hell over that. I respect him. I understand that. Here's my thing. Ryback isn't really the best uh, person to be stepping up like that. Ryback really isn't a John Cena. He definitely is a Brock Lesnar. See, Brock Lesnar can grow a fan and they'll go, okay, yes, Brock. Yes, Brock. John Cena can throw a fit. Yes, John. Yes, John. I guarantee you, Roman Reigns. Roman freaking Reigns can throw a fit. Yes, Roman. Yes, Roman. Oh, especially this man. Oh, God damn it. You better make Roman Reigns happy. We gotta make Roman Reigns look strong. So, right back, though. Man, if you don't get your cue ball, Goldberg looking ass out of here, that's what they'll tell him. They don't respect right back. They didn't respect right back when he first came in. Right back to me. And this is how I really feel. They were never really going to treat him special. I really do feel like Ryback, if he was ever going to get a main event push, should have got it in 2013 when he feuded with John Cena. That was the time to do it. They pushed him way too soon during uh, CM Punk's tenure. That was stupid. There was no way in hell fans were going to cheer Ryback against CM Punk because they love CM Punk. And Ryback didn't make his case all that better when he started mocking CM Punk before he left this time around. But, um, yeah, man, Ryback, he was, and he will never be, even if they keep his uh, contract going, um, he will never be a world champion. He is not someone they want to make a world champion. And quite frankly, I'll admit, I'm not the biggest Ryback fan. If he never becomes a world champion, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. He hasn't really appealed to me. The whole feed me more stuff, cool. The crowd reacts to it, so I respect him for that. I respect him for being able to get the crowd to react to him. You know, I respect you for that, but I'm not going to pay $100 to go see Ryback. If Ryback was in this building, I'm not going to go see him. Sorry. Take that how you will, but I am not the biggest fan of the Ryback character. Now, Ryan Reeves, the talent, maybe if he had better booking like Wayne Barrett and Damian Sandow and others, and Alex Riley, maybe I would like him more. But Ryback, the character, I am not a fan of. I am not a fan of this muscle-bound brute that walks around going, feed me more. And not because it reminds me of Goldberg. You, so what you remind me of Goldberg? It's not the fact that you remind me of Goldberg. It's just the fact that your character never... I don't think his character went anywhere. His character never advanced. He never got better. He never really went anywhere. Yes, he's won championships. Congratulations. But what stuff has he done that's been memorable? What am I going to remember Ryback for? Nothing. He's in the same category as a Luther Reigns. <laughs> as a high right? Sorry, man. That's how it is. That is my thoughts on the releases from WWE. Give me your thoughts on these releases down below in the comment section. But, um, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is your boy, the next man, signing off. That's it.